Okay, part two of our little chatty do, our CP tutorial chatty do. Okay, so we discovered that egg yolk was a reductive protein. It can reduce copper from the blue two form down to the green one form. And the green one form is not as, I'm, I'm telling you this, it's not so toxic for CPs and other plants as the deadly blue form. And also it, um, it's very soluble, can be flushed and move around and flushed. So it's very soluble, we can move around inside the plant and be flushed out the environment, move around the environment, blah, blah, blah. Whereas the deadly blue too is basically quite stationary and stable, but it also can form a complex with the, um, with the cuprous ammonium. With ammonia, so the form is cuprous ammonium. Now, after almost three months, you can see we're still getting bubbles, so your argument that it's just trapped air gets is almost mute and null and void, I would say, uh, after, um, you know, because that was set up before Christmas, so it's almost three months, I would say, if not longer. So, you're, so your argument that, that gas coming off there is trapped air, I think is null and void now after three months, and you've got to, <laughs> yeah, that size bottle, you can't have any more trapped air coming off. If it's coming off at that sort of rate and volume on a regular day-to-day -day basis, and it's been doing that for basically three months now. Uh, yeah, looks rather nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, now this one, still putting up the bubbles, starting to put the bubbles out sort of thing, and... Um, I measured the pH straight from the bottle. It's green, which is about four, but then when you let it sit, only for a few hours, it doesn't even have to be overnight, it goes to this sort of purple alkaline state. So there is a difference in pH. Um, so when we normally measure it, it's about the, around about the neutral uh, sort of uh, level. So obviously the manganese dioxide is actually, uh, either it's buffering the water or it's uh, you know, lowering the pH. Now we could do this again because the uh, pH scale is a logarithmic scale, we could take 10% of that amount of manganese dioxide, put it in another container and we should, if it's just a straight pH, uh, phenomenon, you should be able to raise the uh, pH up one unit. If it's a buffering system, then the pH will barely change, probably 0.1 of a, of a pH unit, which we can't pick up with our pH, universal indicator um, pH kit, because it's only good for half a pH unit, plus or minus half a pH unit. Uh, okay, I draw your attention to the manganese uh, one here. People say, oh, that's iron sulfide or something like that, black iron sulfide. I'm thinking, well, that's a, that's a bottle of manganese. There's no iron there, basically. Well, there, there could be, but it's so minuscule compared to the amount of manganese in the bottle. So it cannot be, in quotes, in theory, uh, iron, black iron sulfide because it's a bottle of manganese. You know, we started off with manganese. You can't end up with iron when you start with manganese or sort of thing. Do you get the logic? I don't know. Is it too subtle a logic from... from Sometimes I wonder about people's veracity, <laughs> sometimes. Okay, mobility. Now that looks like we've got some iron on the surface there and we've got some sort of rusting going on there. So obviously the iron has become mobile, moved up there and has started to rust. What about this black banding there? I suggest to you that that's probably not iron sulfide, it's probably manganese dioxide because it's, it's immobile. Now, is it is that a, a, an oxidation or reduction process? Well, let's go back to basic definitions. Like when you're talking about mycorrhizae, if you see a fungus on a root, by definition you have a fungus root, you have a mycorrhiza. So if you see an ectomycorrhizal uh, you know, fungal sheath on a dionia or a drosocopensis, as I've shown on video and I put up online from years ago, Physically, by definition, you, you have a mycorrhiza and CPs, some CPs, are able to form mycorrhizal. I, I suggest to you that they probably, quite a lot of them are. And yeah, because all the books say most plants are mycorrhizal, and especially in low nutrient poor environments like over in Western Australia. And yet there's this real pushback to say, no, they, they aren't. And I don't think you're, basically, I don't think you're looking hard enough and you're not experimenting in the right way to be able to pick it up. But hopefully when all this research comes to fruition, we'll be able to just plug it in a pot and get ectomycorrhizal, you know, if not overnight, within about three or four days or something. <laughs> and, and be able to, put, yeah. as I said, you make the assumption at the end of your, your um, experimentation, you go back and prove that those, it was correct to make those sort of assumptions. That's part of the scientific method. 
Okay, now with this one with the egg, it's a reductive protein. It's starting to get this sort of black look to it very slow. But also I've noticed this, it looks like it's starting to pink. Now we know from when it starts to pink, it should be three or four days and it should become quite noticeable. So again, that's our knowledge. Let's put it to the test. We wait another three or four days. If it becomes quite noticeable, then, then we assume it's not iron because, you know, I mean, you could say, you could make this suggestion it's copper acetylite because copper can go to that sort of nice, nice red colour, you see, but we might be heading down some of those tracks later on, but, you know. Okay, the next stage now is to take some of these bottles. We might start off with some of those other ones and now <coughs> do a 10% one. If we put the same uh, 10, uh, uh, one-tenth amount of manganese dioxide with a small one, and that's it's basically half volume, that would be... Uh, 40%. If it was 1.25 litres, which is exactly half or 2.4, it would be exactly 50% sort of thing. Uh, do you get my lo I'm trying to make up for that mistake I made with 2,400 2, uh, milliliters in a 2.4 litre bottle. Okay. Um, basically, we've only got one more minute. I may extend the chatty do a bit more, but um, this one, so far no reaction with the night. Oh, lots of bubbles though. Oh yeah, look at the bubbles in there. Okay, um, because it's too acid, basically, I think. We've already learned that, you know, uh, superphosphate is too acid to actually grow the organisms. As far as we know, whether the actual superphosphate is doing something else, maybe it's locking down manganese. So if we add the superphosphate plus the manganese dioxide, the organism can grow. And vice versa, we're going to learn things like that, which will help us make our future pots whether we should actually be adding manganese dioxide and working out how long it takes for the organisms to actually build up in the pot. There may be like an initial delay and do we get some of that nice green, dark green moss that they have in some of these pots? Do we get some of this sort of stuff growing eventually because of the manganese dioxide? I don't know. Oh, sorry, 